The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. And we want to welcome everybody. If you would, please share this broadcast, invite folks come, uh, to come in if they like these kind of updates. Uh, we want to invite you to, or we want to uh, encourage you to uh, invite them into the broadcast, uh, give them the link, share the link, and tag them or whatever you need to do to get them in here to the broadcast. Uh, so again, if you're new to the broadcast, if you're new here on Facebook Live, please let us know where you're joining us from. We always like to acknowledge all of our new folks. Again, I'm in, this is End Time Headlines. This is a prophetic viewpoint. Today, I'm going to be dealing with a sneak preview of the coming new world order. And at this time, I want to officially welcome all of our podcast audience and those that will be listening and watching by YouTube as well. So there is a, a few stories, guys, that are coming out that I think is uh, definitely worth noting. Uh, this first one... <clears throat> Uh, is coming out of China, uh, coming out of communist China. And I want to talk about this today. What better way to keep track of Christians there in China than to plant surveillance devices in their homes uh, in order to monitor and track those that the communist nations suspect of threatening the country's author uh, authoritarian rule? Uh, this is exactly what's happening now in the communist nation, according to a new report from Bitter Winter. Again, <clears throat> according uh, to new information from Bitter Winter, which is a, uh, an organization that keeps up with this and the persecution of believers there in, in, uh, in China, the communist nation is now planting uh, surveillance devices in the homes of those who are deemed to be a threat. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. According to a report, numerous reports have emerged over the past few years of which members of the Church of, of Almighty God or the CAG, which is a religious minority group, uh, recount being targeted for investigation and surveillance by the China's by China's Communist Party. The monotheistic new religious movement is now in the crosshairs of China's list of cults that they deem to be a threat to the state security. The report goes on to state that after being released from prison in 2018, one member of the CAG, which again, this is the church of almighty God there in China, noticed that two men were installing a new camera by the entrance to their house and was, and was the fourth one that had been installed there. The report stated that the woman's mother, also suspected of being a member of this church organization, discovered a listening device that was installed behind a washing machine in her own home. Think about that for a moment. This woman found a tracking device in her own home behind her washing machine. This is where, why are we talking about this today? Because again, you... Uh, let me read the rest of this, and then I'm going to elaborate a little bit on this, because I want you to get a little bit deeper picture of this. A few days after that incident, she also discovered a micro camera uh, in her garage. When the mother was taken in for interrogation, police officers played a recording of her saying that she was being monitored in her home. Let me say that again. Police officers showed up at her door and played a recording of her actually stating that she was being monitored in her home. <laughs> so she just basically proved the point that she was making. Back in 2018, police arrested a member of this church and interrogated him for over 36 hours, drilling him for information about his wife, his son, his sister, who were out of town on church matters. Despite being monitored 24-7, the father managed to warn his family members not to return home, and Chinese police officers continued to visit his home, demanding to know the whereabouts of his family and, and demanded that he keep his cell phone on 24 hours a day. While a tracking device was installed on his scooter and a high-definition camera was placed at the only entrance to his residential community. Then 
back in September of last year, the government reportedly installed two more additional surveillance cameras next, next to the fourth existing opposite the house of a man in his 80s in the northwestern province of Shanghai. Bitter Winter reported that in October, police had searched the home of this church member who took, who took care of this man in his 80s and informed her that he had received information about her through, quote, tracking and monitoring devices. Uh, a man by the name of Sam Brownback, who is a U.S. ambassador at a large, uh, for, for the international religious freedom, detailed how China is employing its most, quote, aggressive technology to oppress the religious minority of their nation including sophisticated cameras, chips inside mobile devices, facial recognition technology, and collecting DNA samples. By the way, all of which are now implemented in the United States of America. Let me say that again. Sophisticated cameras, check. Chips inside mobile devices, check. Facial recognition technology, check. And collecting DNA samples, check. All of these are also being implemented in the United States. Quote, they've got technology deployed now where they've got surveillance cameras virtually everywhere in public. Check. If you don't think that's true here in America, uh, then again, I want to find the rock that you're laying under because it's very comfortable. Okay, again, we read stuff like this and it almost seems like that we're reading stuff, things out of fictional, apocalyptical, end time novels like Left Behind. This is stuff that we've read about for years that were basically best, uh, uh, they were best sellers in fictional novels about apocalyptic events in the future. There's movies, there's programs, there's shows that's been centered around this. And these were all, and, or has been for years, what if scenarios. And it was based on truths of the book of Revelation and where we're headed. Now we're seeing these things unfold in our lifetime and it's picking up speed. And again, this is why the other day I went on a little bit of a rant on Facebook and I said that uh, there is a large percentage of the Bible of the 66 books that you read is made up of Bible prophecy. There's prophecies inundated in both testaments, yet you've got preachers and teachers and pastors that, that are behind pulpits and churches all across America and even outside of America who do not teach on eschatology. Why is that? And it's keeping a whole generation in the dark and keeping them ignorant of these things so that when watchmen get out and they begin to talk about these things and they begin to warn people about these things, we look like nut jobs. We look like conspiracy theorists. We look loony and crazy and mental. It's all part of the plan, guys. It is a master plan that is perpetrated and orchestrated by Satan and is being played out by communist governments, technology, and the systems that are being created to fulfill this stuff. Listen to this. A new proposed, uh, this, let me give you a little, uh, another headline here real quick. A new proposed Nicaraguan law could result in fake news Publishers facing years of prison. Again, in Nicaragua, uh, according to a report from France 24, deputies from the presidential party there just proposed a law that would make spreading fake news on social media platforms punishable by up to four years in prison. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. Just sit back, take a deep breath. Facebook and Twitter are the big leading proponents of 
snuffing out misinformation and fake news. And how are they doing it in the United States of America? They're flagging accounts, they're shadow banning, they're suppressing, and they're removing entire accounts off of social media. Now, these are pats on the wrist. These are slaps on the wrist <clears throat> compared to countries like this where, and by the way, this is not the only country uh, that is on board with this and proposed this. Other countries have proposed this. Again, punishable by prison for four years. Punishable of four years in prison for spreading or publishing fake news. The report states that the proposed bill would allow sentences up to two to four years. Quote, the publication or, or uh, of the dispersion of false or distorted information that would likely contribute, listen to the verbiage of this, to spread anxiety, anguish, or fear. According to the text published on the National Assembly website and further detail this bill, people who also convicted of fraud or cyber espionage, identity theft, or the use of the internet to corrupt minors uh, or for child pornography will also be punished with, with two to 10 years in prison as well. Now notice, again, this is how all this is always, this is how this stuff gets passed because we mingle it or we mix it in a batch with good stuff. Because who, who wouldn't want to think that that's good? I mean, are you kidding me? Corruption of minors and child pornography punished with two to 10 years in prison. Most people is going to uh, agree with that. Most people is going to be on board with that. Most people is going to say that's a good thing. But again, that's hidden in the, the fine print of this entire bill. So, and, uh, so I'll come on somebody. So in other words, if we can get enough people on board to, be, to support this, we'll just slip this on in through because this is just part of the entire bill. And the fine print of the proposed bill also covers access to personal data. Oh, did you hear me? I want to say it again. In the fine print of this proposed bill, it also covers access to personal data and using social media networks to threaten or intimidate people because of their ethnic, cultural, or religious background will be considered an offense as well. In other words, it's called hate crime. So if they deem it a hate crime, this will be a prison sentence. So all this is veiled in this bill. And you say, well, this is in Nicaragua. This is not us. Yes, but again, it only takes a little leaven to leaven the whole lump. If you actually think for a moment that all this technology and all these bills and all these things that they're, that they're implementing in other countries to crack down on offenders and people spreading false information and fake news and agitating people and enticing people and causing this and causing that. If you actually think for one moment that it's just going to be there and it's never going to come to the shores of America, friends, again, uh, move, move over because I'm moving to your house because I want to be in the cave that you're living in. Come on, it's time to wake up and, uh, and understand that we are seeing a sneak preview of the coming new world order. And you say, what do you mean the coming new world order? Listen, I'm not talking about, you can call it whatever you want, the Illuminati or this or that. I'm talking about the coming system of the beast mentioned in the book of Revelation, this system and this government controlled system that will be controlled by the antichrist himself and the false prophet they will be able they will control the the media they will control i, I believe that they're going to control everything media healthcare currency religion the whole nine yards just like in genesis 11 is a picture of the new world order that is in the solomon said as it were in the beginning so shall it be in the end and as it is in the end so shall it begin in the beginning so again it goes full circle and in genesis 11 
If there's a Tower of Babel, there was one mind, one accord, one language, one purpose, one economy. They were one. And again, this is, and it was being led up by a man by the name of Nimrod, who was inspired by Satan. And again, your coming Antichrist will do the exact same thing. By the way, the word Antichrist means one who uh, opposes Christ. He's going to oppose Christ, oppose Yeshua, oppose Jesus. So this coming Antichrist, the man of sin, the man of perdition, the first beast rising up out of the sea, Revelation 13 with seven heads and ten horns, this man, along with the false prophet, will create he will form, he will fashion a global government governed system in which you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade without an allegiance that's pledged to him, his religion, and his government. That is all in the Bible. That's not a conspiracy theory. It's the word of Almighty God. And you say, why are you yelling? Because I am fired up. I get people that ask me that all the time. Why do you get so loud? Why do you get so exuberant? Why do you get so expressive? It's called, come on, it's called righteous indignation. Come on, we, we need to get people fired up. You know, people, listen, if two old guys can get on television and yell at each other for two hours in a presidential debate, come on, then... I'm going to get fired up for what is happening before our eyes. All right. So again, it's not a matter of if, but when America will one day see these draconian measures to crack down on social media posts, blogs, and so forth to distribute what the mainstream media determines is quote, misinformation and fake news. And it's already happening. By the way, today's October 1st. The new policy goes into play with Facebook. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out between now and the election. I believe the day will come when we will see be people being put in prison for sharing information online that is deemed dangerous and misinforming. Again, buckle up because the tide is turning faster than what many believe. Let me give you another headline here. Listen to this. This made my hair stand up in the back of my neck when I read this. This was a report from Science Times. Science Times. This is a report. Here, listen, here was the here's the headline of this report. Quote, why I implanted a chip in my hand. I'm going to give you a, 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 an excerpt on this article. Quote. The chip in my right hand is a near-field communication device that I scan with an app on my smartphone to access and rewrite the information I have stored on it. It can contain uh, a minuscule 888 kilobytes of data storage and only communicates with devices less than four centimeters away. In my left hand is a chip designed as a digital verification device that uses a proprietary app from the developer Vivoke, I believe that's how you pronounce that. The implant procedure is neither difficult nor extremely painful. Well, boy, that just makes me want to go right out and get one, doesn't it you? I can feel the bump of the chips under my skin and often invite others to feel it. The bump does not protrude from the back of my hand. If I didn't tell someone it was there, they probably wouldn't even know it by the sight of it being implanted. But they are not undetectable. An implanted chip can be a secure storage location for emergency contact information. Again, this is the bait. This is the hook, line, and sinker bait that's going to get people baited to get this in their hands. I've said this for years. The mark of the beast will not only be enforced upon a generation, but it will be widely embraced by a willing generation. Let me read it again. An implanted chip can be a secure storage location for emergency contact information. It can be used as an electronic business card or as an electronic key to unlock your door. 
I give public presentations and interviews about my research. And as a result, I do not have to store private data on my chip. There are thousands of people all over the world with chip implants, people who I like to call voluntary cyborgs. Again, this was the author of this article from Science Times. Voluntary cyborgs are people involved in the community and practice of implanting technology beneath their skin for enhancement or augmentation purposes. And I've counted myself as a member of this subculture for several years. My research in the community has focused on the formation of a distinct subculture and its representations in popular media. I coined the term voluntary cyborgs to make a distinction from medical cyborgs who have had technology like pacemakers, insulin pumps, IUDs, and more implanted by medical professionals for rehabilitative or therapeutic purposes. The, listen, I laughed yesterday. We shared this article Elon Musk was blasting Bill Gates and came out in an inter, our recent podcast and said, I will never take the vaccination. If it, even if it was come out today, my family and I were not, will not take this vaccination and he even called Bill Gates a knucklehead. And I'm thinking, well, hold on. Well, if that's not the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is. So let me get this straight, Elon. You won't take a vaccination. And I, again, this is not for or against a vaccination. I'm just trying to prove a point here. You won't take a vaccination in your body, but you want to implant chips in people's brains and make them a cyborg. Okay, so that just justifies all of it, right? So we, I'm telling you guys, we're living in uh, the twilight zone. 2020 is... Uh, I mean, I know it, it, things have been gone, you know, things have been going downhill for quite some time, but this is unbelievable. Um, let me, I, I got to give you another one. You want another one here? Let me give you another one. Uh, this one's pretty unbelievable too. Um, I want to pull up and show you this little device here. This uh, made a lot of headlines. This is called Amazon One. Uh, and it looks like Amazon is either unknowingly or willingly, knowingly paving the way for the conditioning of a generation to accept a system of buying, selling, and trading with the use of their hand instead of a credit card or smartphone. According to a recent blog post, the company has apparently unveiled its own palm recognition technology, and that's what you're looking at on your screen if you're watching by visual here. As Amazon One, uh, this company is planning on rolling this thing out uh, in Amazon's home market of Seattle first, and then it will be used, uh, probably be dispersed through other states quickly after that. And again, it will be it will be used by the uh, the palm of individuals to identify them. The technology doesn't stop there. It's like, wait, there's more, right? Remember those infomercials? They go on and on and on, and they try to say the problem. Then they say, wait, there's more. The technology doesn't stop there. It also will use a combination that reveals details of the palm. Whoa such as lines and ridges, listen to this, to build a, quote, palm signature. Wow. The vice president of Amazon Physical Retail recently stated, quote, in most retail environments, Amazon One could become an alternate payment or loyalty card option with a device at the checkout counter next to a, quote, traditional point of sale system. You know, those pesky cash machines and cards. Or for entering a location like a stadium or badging into work. How convenient. Amazon One could be part of an existing entry point to make, an, to make accessing the location quicker and easier. So, hey, if you don't want to put a, a microchip inserted in your hand, all you need is the palm of your hand. Hmm. 
The president went on and stated that Amazon One will also come to other Amazon stores and will be used for more than just paying with your palm. Quote, we believe Amazon One has broad application uh, has broad potential beyond our retail stores. So we also plan to offer the service to third parties like retailers, stadiums, and office buildings. Of course you are. So that more people can benefit from the ease and convenience in more places. In other words, what a better way to inundate an entire society to condition them again I want you to stop and think about this, guys, for a second. When your smartphones first came out, it was you entered a code, a four-digit password, five-digit, six-digit, whatever. Everybody was cool with that. But then they took it a little bit further, and they did the thumbprint, remember? And a lot of people freaked out about it, especially when you know the Bible and you know where things are going, and they didn't like I don't know about that thumbprint. I don't know about doing that. I don't want to have to use my thumb to access certain devices because it's reading my fingerprint. And then uh, many other retailers, uh, entertainment parks such as Disney and so on and so forth, they, they just carried that baton and begin to implement that into their companies as well. Because now when you go to Disney, you take your right hand and you put your hand in this device and it scans it and it knows you. And it's already, it's done this very thing that Amazon's talking about. So look, before we jump on Amazon, this thing has been out for a while, but now it's, it's getting more widely distributed. So then we didn't, you know, we were like, well, I don't know about that. Then it went to facial recognition. And the people that didn't like putting the, the four digit or the, the, the passcode eventually uh, got relaxed and eventually surrendered, I guess, to the idea of using their thumbprint. But then they moved on and went to facial recognition. Oh, I don't know about facial recognition. This has gone too far. I'm not doing this and doing that. But now... This has been widely accepted in society. So again, do you see what I'm saying here? We are pushing, we're advancing this. We are conditioning a generation more and more and more and further and further and further until we get to a point where we have reached the climax of Revelation 13. And it will not be surprising or shocking that a system is being proposed that you have to put something in your right hand or in your forehead to be able to buy, sell, or trade. I'm telling you, I sat down with grandmas, fathers, mothers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, and those who know the Bible, they've studied the Bible, they've been in church all their life, and they said that they would have never believed that they would be alive to see the technology that would be created to fulfill what we read about in Revelation 13. Well, wake up. It's here, it's alive, and it's well, and we are breakneck speed advancing towards the fulfillment of that. Listen to this. Quote, we selected palm recognition for a few important reasons, the executive wrote. Quote, one reason was that palm recognition is considered more private than some biometric alternatives because you can't determine a person's identity by looking at an image of their palm. It also requires someone to make an intentional gesture by holding their palm over the device to use, and it is contactless. Oh, come on. It's contactless. Tell me that's not a selling point in the age of coronavirus. It's contactless, which we think customers will appreciate, especially in current times. Bam, there's your sales pitch. Ultimately, using a palm as a biometric identifier, identifier puts customers in control of when and where they use the service. On the surface, this sounds convenient, again, but when you know Bible prophecy, you'll begin to highlight and understand, again, what John the Revelator warned about. Then I want to talk about our last little bit uh, of information here. This uh, 
basically this came right over. We just reported this probably not even an hour ago. This was, I'm not surprised. Uh, this coming election in November will allow voters in the state of Nevada. If you're in, if you're in Nevada, you may want to know this. Uh, to this coming election in November will allow voters in the state of Nevada to be able to decide whether to change the text or the language of the state constitution to remove its language defining marriage as a union between only one man and one woman. This was according to a recent report from the Christian Post. Nevada is one of nearly 30 states that have passed a constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriage before such rules were struck down by the 2015 Supreme Court decision. However, listen to this. If this passes, the text of Section 21 of Article 1 of the Nevada Constitution will then be revised so the people of Nevada are going to vote on this. And if it passes, it will be revised to read that, quote, the state of Nevada and its political subdivision shall recognize marriages and issue marriage license to couples regardless of gender. I, I want to say that again. If this passes, the Nevada Constitution will then be revised to read the state of Nevada and its political subdivision shall recognize marriages and issue marriage license to couples regardless of gender. According to the report, the language will offer a caveat that, quote, religious organizations and members of the clergy have the right to refuse to solemnize a marriage and no person will have the right to make any claim against a religious organization or member of the clergy for such a refusal. Wow. This coming proposal stresses that, quote, all legally valid marriages must be treated equally under the laws. And no surprise here, this proposal included organizations such as the ACLU, the pro-LGBT advocacy organization, and the Human Rights Campaign and Planned Parenthood Advocates. Big shock there, right? So again, listen to what I'm telling you guys. We, all these things, the ball is just rolling. We are advancing and thrusting towards what, again, what I, what I talked about earlier in the segment is a, is a antichrist ruled and reigned government that you can read about it in Revelation 13 and you'll continue, you, you can read it from all in the book of Revelation. You'll see there's going to be co complete control over nations, tribes, tongues, rich, free, poor, young, slave, free, bond. Every individual on the face of the planet is going to be forced to comply with this system. And I've had people tell me that, again, this is conspiracy theories. This is not true. Uh, I'm, you know, all these Bible thumpers, these right wing extremists, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But isn't it interesting how, once again, we're seeing this thing moving forward and paving the way for such things as we've read about for thousands of and thousands of years. So again, this has been End Time Headlines, guys, with a special prophetic update today, or prophetic viewpoint, rather. Uh, we hope that you have, um, you can go to our main website and bookmark it, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. Listen, we got good news for all you folks that uh, you, were, you, you were once part of our email subscription, our daily digest, and we canceled that because we have the app. Many, many, many of you guys have contacted me pleading with us to get this get back up and on. The good news is we're going to bring this back. The bad news is you're going to have to resubscribe. So we're going to we're going to get some graphics put up. We're going to make it easy for you to sign in, sign up for this. You'll get one digest every single day in your mailbox and you'll be informed. So we're going to get that back and going again. So we hope that you guys will be happy with that. So we'll have that. We'll have the app again, the, uh, the official ETH app 
You can download this at the Apple Store at iTunes. You can, if you have an Android, you can go to the Google Play Store, download that Android app. Again, ETH is available on Apple and Android for your convenience. When you get this app, it's going to have all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective, as well as breaking news alerts when we when we post them. It's going to have our news articles all in there. It's going to have our blogs. It's going to have our podcast. It's going to have our YouTube channel. All that's going to be there on the App Store as well. Guys, by the way, we do have a free podcast. You guys watching by YouTube, watching by Facebook. If you go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, both of our ministries are there. Both of our branches of our ministry are now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. End Time Headlines and Remnant Revival. If you go and type in Remnant Revival, please subscribe to that because there's going to be messages that's going to come from there that you're not going to see on ETH. And there's going to be messages on Remnant Revival that you're not going to see uh, on uh uh, on or message from ETH, not on RRM. So e- either one of these, uh, it's again, I've said this, it's one tree, but two branches. ETH or Intel Headlines is the information branch. Again, uh, and Remnant Revival Ministries is the ex- uh, the equipping, uh, teaching, uh, and uh, the exhortation branch of our ministry. And I know many of you guys have been blessed by that. By the way, you can follow Remnant Revival Ministries on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, just right there, you can look for us, Remnant Revival Ministries at Remnant Revival Ministries. And also our main, our website for that is remnantrevival.org. Again, remnantrevival.org. And as always, we want to give you an opportunity, guys, if you've been blessed by either the information arm or the revelation arm of these ministries, ETH or RRM, we want to invite you to uh, to sow a gift of any amount, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you can do that because all of our messages are free, our updates are free, our app is free, our newsletter is free. You guys don't have to pay a dime. There's nothing that you guys have to pay at all. Uh, all we ask you to do is if the Lord puts it upon your heart, to support this ministry, please do so. Uh, again, at whatever the Lord puts upon your heart, you can do that by going to our main website, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. You can go to our app, go all the way to the bottom, to the right, where it says donate. You can click on it. It's going to take you to a page where you can give electronically. Or if you're old school and you'd like to give by check or money order, you can do that by looking at the screen up, up in front of you. If you're listening by podcast, uh, it is End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. Again, that is End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this special prophetic viewpoint today on this uh uh, I think I said Monday earlier. I want to correct that. It is Thursday. I, I, I want to say I said Thursday, but for some reason, my mind thinks that I'm saying Monday. But if I did say that, I want to issue that correction. It is Thursday, October 1st. Today is the 1st of October. Um, and uh, we wanted to at least squeeze in one uh, prophetic or viewpoint uh, this week. I know uh, we put a notice out on our Facebook page that we're not, we were going to not be able to broadcast this week, but once in a while it, this week, if we get some uh, free time, then we're going to do that tomorrow. Same thing. If I get a free chance to do that, we're going to come on. Cause I've got a message that I can deliver on remnant revival. That's not prophecy, but it's an equipping message. And I'd like to get that out before the end of the week. If not, we'll do that next week as well. So we love you guys. God bless you. Let me pray for you real quick. Father, I pray for all uh, of our family that are watching today by or listening today. We pray for them. We bless them today. We ask that you keep them, bless them. May, the, may your countenance shine upon them. May your favor rest upon them. May you keep them from harm, danger, any disabling accidents. Watch over the children. Watch over their family. Bless them coming in and bless them going out. Prosper the works of their hands and bless everything that they endeavor to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.